This really struck a nerve with me today. I'll let you listen first. I think developers should be able to set whatever target they realistically can deliver as long as that target is maintained and and consistent, right? Right. Uh, like Final Fantasy 16 is a case where I would argue, I would agree with him that it feels like the performance mode was tacked on at the last minute. And the problem with that is that hitting 60 FPS or hitting your target requires this. It's like a, a holistic thing from the beginning of development where yes. everything needs, everyone needs to be on board with that target early on in order to optimize for it. And if you're not doing that, you can't just throw it in. And it feels like 16 definitely just had it thrown in at the end. And it's like not able to hit that target. And so it's bad. So they probably should have just left it out. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? It's actually right. fairly uncommon when something's capped to 30. Uh, and I think it's okay right. if it's capped to 30. Uh, it's not optimal, but, you know, for it, I you know, I can... I can be accepting of that. Like for Starfield, for instance, it didn't really bother me that it was capped at 30 on Xbox. Uh, and I, like I said, 16, I would have been happier. I recommended the quality mode. I, I honestly think that putting a performance mode in was a mistake because it made the game feel less polished than it actually was if you used that mode. Um, so I don't know. What, what do you guys think of this? But. I think that's the the consumer's choice in the end, and they shouldn't necessarily just force developers to do a 60 FPS mode. Uh, your intellect is as weak as your dollar. Failure is your destiny. You disrespect yourself and your nation. You are made of stupid. You can force the developer with your buying, like buying the game or not buying the game, but then like making like a whole sorry storm on Twitter about it or something like, I don't know. Not my, not my Something thing. else I want to add to this though. Come on, how, how dare, dare you? you? It's 2024. How can you say to leave 60 FPS out and that 30 FPS is okay? 30 FPS is terrible. If future PS5 games cannot run at 60 FPS at a reasonable resolution, I'll throw my PS5 in the garbage. And I'm getting a gaming PC. What the heck? I can play any game at high settings at 1440p or 1800p on a budget gaming PC for about $800, and I don't need to wait and buy these so-called remastered games. I can just upgrade my graphics card and push the settings up to Ultra. Bam, I've remastered my own game. Not just one game, but all of them. I won't need to pay a monthly subscription to play classic games. I can play any game I want, and with a GeForce card, I can remix and remaster any old game I want. And now you're telling me, are we putting too much pressure on developers to hit 60 FPS on PS5 and Xbox, and the companies dare to put an 8K stamp on the console box? Are we getting scammed here? I can get a PC, run all Xbox games, some PS5 exclusives, and I'm good. Furthermore, I'm reading online that Sony is also considering moving all PlayStation exclusives to PC, even on day one release. For now, it's just a rumor, but if that comes to fruition, I'm all in on PC. Did you hear that Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to have unlocked FPS on PS5? And it will be at 30 to 35 FPS? Yeah, no thank you. Uh, not my Something thing. else I want to add to this though, there was talk about Dragon's Dogma 2 this week where they're like, oh yeah, it's just going to be unlocked. And I think that, that's a case where- That was yeah, said? Yeah, that was said. Uh, it's a variable frame rate. So, oh, yeah, no. that's, right? And that's I, bad. I, so, I agree that an unlocked frame rate should be available in those cases, and I think it's okay to offer that on consoles, especially for forward-looking hardware, but for the day one experience, uh, if you're if you're if you're running with a very unstable frame rate, and maybe it won't be, but all previous stuff has been, they should they should offer a cap 30 option. Option. Totally optional. But it should still be there, I think, for consistency. This is such a Capcom thing to do. What? What is they, this? Like, I don't know. What, they do. They do this no man's land frame rate stuff way too often. Yeah, it's not good. Like, I'm really afraid Dragon's Dogma 2 on console is going to be. They said they're pushing RT in it on PC, mm -hmm. so it's probably going to target RT on console yep. as well too, based on the presentations. Like, I don't think this thing's a constant 60 at all. And like, so offer a frame rate cap. at the very <laughs> least if, so on xbox because if you run in 120 hertz mode you get the f large range of vrr so vrr users should be okay playstation could be okay if they implement the 120 mode as well which they've done before but if they allow it to run in 120 then they can have low frame rate compensation but if it's just a 60 hertz game this could be a real mess on the ps5 i can buy a low-end gaming pc and play it at 60 fps 
or I can buy secondhand parts and build a mid-range gaming PC that'll play most games at 4K 60fps or 1440p. Check out this mid-range PC running RDR2 above 60fps. On PS5, it runs at 1080p 30fps, the PS4 version. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for a handful of PS5 exclusives that I was dying to play, I'd probably never have bought the PS5. So yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes open this year. Dot and probably by the end, I'll give in and go for a gaming PC. Sure, I'll pay more up front, but I won't pay for a PS Plus subscription. I'll get dirt cheap Steam games plus emulation. Not only that, but it'll also be an amazing video editing rig. Sony, don't make me do this. I tried, I really tried, but you lied. You lied to us gamers. You lied with the PS4 Pro, you told us PS4 Pro would play games either at 4K or 1080p 60fps, it didn't do that, and people moved on. Then you came out with PS5 and you told us all games 4K 60fps, and then you said 4K fidelity ultra setting ray tracing at 30fps, fine it's an option. But that was a lie, here we are today, debating whether we put too much pressure on developers to hit 60fps on consoles. We are putting pressure, no we are not putting pressure. We were promised, we paid money, we saved money to buy these consoles on a promise of 4K 60fps, we're not putting pressure, we want what we paid for, and if we don't get it, we won't buy your consoles anymore. Heck, I'll go as far as not buying the PS5 Pro, and oh god, if you dare to advertise 8K gaming, I'll really lose it. Those words shouldn't even be in your mouth. Master 4K 60fps first before you say 8K. The most powerful gaming PCs can't do 8K, but your $600 PS5 Pro will. In other news, Kill the Justice League has encountered severe multiplayer and online connection issues since its release, rendering the game essentially unplayable for a significant portion of its player base. Despite being a month post-launch, Rocksteady, the developer, is still in the process of investigating and fixing these problems. This prolonged difficulty in addressing the game's technical shortcomings has led to considerable player frustration. Here's where it gets interesting. In an unusual move, Sony appears to be offering refunds for digital purchases of the game, a policy shift reminiscent of their response to Cyberpunk 2077's troubled launch. This decision is notable because it diverges from Sony's typical stance on digital refunds, which are generally not granted except under exceptional circumstances. A Reddit user, Utris, shared a screenshot indicating they received a refund due to the game being unusable, suggesting Sony acknowledges the severity of the game's issues. The early sales figures for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth suggest a challenging path ahead in matching the commercial success of its predecessor, Final Fantasy VII Remake, with a reported 30% decrease in launch week sales compared to the remake. According to Games Industry's Christopher Dring, there's a lot to unpack regarding what this means for the sequel and its reception in the market. One critical aspect to consider is that the reported figures only account for UK box copies. In today's gaming landscape, digital sales play a significant role and often surpass physical sales, a trend that has been accelerating over the years. The exclusion of digital sales data leaves a gap in our understanding of the game's overall performance. It's entirely possible that digital sales could paint a different picture, potentially offsetting the decline seen in physical copies. Final Fantasy VII Remake launched in April 2020, right in the midst of the global COVID-19 pandemic. This timing meant that many people were confined to their homes, seeking entertainment and escapism through video games, which likely contributed to the game's strong sales performance. The unique circumstances of the pandemic created an unprecedented boost in video game sales across the board, making year-over-year -year comparisons challenging. Spider-Man 2 finally got the big update that's dropping today, March 7th. This update will include new game plus, some brand new suits, and a lot more features. A lot of people are going to be very excited about this. Some of those new suits have already been revealed. Version 1.2 will bring new game plus to the game. Players have been eager to replay the game on a harder difficulty with all their suits and abilities carrying over, or just to replay a favorite mission or two. There will be more to unlock, including ultimate levels, golden gadget styles, and more. New Game Plus will feature harder difficulties, which is always a ton of fun. There are also golden gadget styles, which will affect gameplay, adding more reasons to jump back in and play. Suit styles for several of Peter's symbiote story suits will be added, allowing further customization. New suits, including Marvel's Hellfire Gala suits for both Peter and Miles, will be added at no additional cost. These suits come from comic books, and it's great to see comic book suits added to the game for free.